Jeremy, I'd like to ask you, what are the risks to your strategy and how do you go about mitigating them? So, so we specifically target areas with, with a high weighting of government revenue. Um, they have been traditionally re resilient through economic, different economic environments. We've certainly seen that, I guess, over the last 18 months, but, but clearly some risks come, come with that. And one of them is around, is around policy risk. So there's a few different things we do across our portfolio to, to, to manage that. Firstly, we focus on areas that are a priority across the political spectrum. As you mentioned, Annabelle, these are long-term structures. So, so this is a portfolio that can work through different uh, through different political scenari scenarios. We also have a diversification of different policies across, across the investments that we make. But perhaps the, the, the greatest mitigant for us is we really focus on those areas which can deliver those significant savings versus the status quo, um, which has traditionally, again, provided some policy resilience. Yeah, so good mitigation strategy. Paul, what are risks to your strategy and how do you mitigate them? It's all about due diligence and a granular attention to detail, because clearly the demand uh, that we have, which is exceptional for social housing, um, one could think that one could simply buy a property almost anywhere and let it appropriately. But actually what's absolutely critical is that each and every property has local authority support, commissioner support, that the rents are set at the right level at the beginning, so that, because obviously they are indexed, so if they're set at the right level at the start, they prove value for money through the life of the lease. Location is everything. You can look at a shiny new building and think that looks wonderful, but actually if it's not near community facilities, near transport facilities, it's not going to serve the needs of young people who want to enjoy community and society as much as any of us do. And that's the whole intention. We've rejected more properties than we've bought over the life of the five years. Primarily the reasons for rejecting properties are location, over-renting. These will be bought by others, and it doesn't mean they're not good properties in some cases, but they're not appropriate for a fund that's saying, we want to be the absolute bellwether for quality and for price, protecting the public purse as we measure in our social impact surveys with the good economy and the social public calculator that demonstrate that the portfolio delivers nearly £70 million a year of savings to the taxpayer. And the reason it's able to do that is because obviously um, living in institutions is more expensive, but also the rent levels are an appropriate level uh, when we set them. So it's all about granular attention to detail um, as a manager, making sure we understand what the local conditions are and what the local care providers and local authorities need. Thanks so much, Paul. I'm really interested. It's location, location, location again, actually, for social housing, just like any other type of property. Very interesting. Kenneth, what are the risks for your strategy and how do you mitigate them? Well, the pandemic uh, type situation was always a risk identified in our prospectus. In fact, our tenants came through it remarkably well and the quality of the real estate and the quality of the operators resulted in only 3% of the beds uh, actually being impacted uh, and having infections. Competing with buyers who don't understand the risk is actually a risk for us uh, and they take on unsustainable rents. That'll come back to bite them and we'll be here to pick up the assets in time to come. Right. And never and and never touch and never trust the government completely. I've trusted the government for income in past businesses and they let me down. So we have a significant element of private pay because there's a couple of trillion in net worth in the over 65s. There's a vast amount of wealth in the housing stock. Uh, and for the one in seven people who needs care in private homes, uh, that's a sweet spot for us. Good to hear. You never trust the government when it comes to money, Kenneth. Very Sorry. Wise. Yeah, they Very take money wise. off me all the time. <laughs>